name's Robin Lambert, I'm 20 years old and I have cerebral palsy, but you guys know me as the T-Rex and you're watching my T-Rex life. Okay guys, let's talk about manual wheelchairs and how to choose them. This video was requested on Instagram, so thank you so much for that. Go check out their profile. But I've been in a number of different wheelchairs over my time, so from my experience, I am going to share with you my top tips and things to consider when choosing a manual wheelchair. Now, obviously, a lot of it is going to depend on your ability within the chair. Uh, what is your balance like? Are you going to be self-propelling? Um, how much are you going to be using your chair? What kind of terrain are you going to be using your chair over? These are all things to consider. But the number one thing that is going to make a chair work for you is the fit. You want it to be as close to your body as possible. Obviously, you don't want it so tight that it's going to give you pressure sores or anything like that. But you really want it to be an extension of your body. You want it to move with you. If it's too wide and you're like reaching your arms out like this to push it, um, you're not going to be getting anywhere fast, you're not going to be very mobile, and you're going to get some serious shoulder problems. So you want the chair to really fit. You want it to be close to your hips um, and as small as possible and as compact as possible, I believe, um, in order to get around spaces like shopping centres and things like that. The next biggest thing is the weight. The lighter the wheelchair, the easier it is going to be to push and to get around. But again, this is going to depend on the type of wheelchair you need. For me, my wheelchair is completely stripped back. It doesn't even have a back lock because that adds weight. So my chair is as light as it pretty much could possibly be um, with the materials that are used because I don't have things like armrests or um, handlebars well, like push handles, um, or, you know, any kind of add-ons to my chair. Because I use my chair a lot for travelling, so I want to be able to pick it up easily, put it together, and push for quite a distance. But again, it's going to depend on your ability within the chair. Another thing that's going to make a difference is the tippiness or the balance point of the chair. Now, this is really going to depend on your balance. What kind of use of your muscles do you have? Like, do you have core muscles? Um, you know, how high is your injury, if you've got a spinal cord injury, or like, are your arms affected and things like that, if you have another condition. Um, but for me, I prefer my chair to be as tippy as possible, um, without me sort of falling backwards as soon as I sit up. You know, I want it to be able to pop up curbs nice and easily, uh, I want to be able to do a wheelie nice and easily so I can get down a curb, um, and I just find that it's more mobile if it's a little bit more tippy. Um, but obviously you don't want to put yourself at risk. So this is something you kind of have to figure out for yourself. You have to figure out where your center of balance is in the chair and how much you can handle, you know, um, it tipping, I suppose. But it really does make a difference, especially, you know, if you are capable of doing things like climbing curbs and bouncing down curbs and things like that. Um, because, as we know, the world is not that accessible. <laughs> The next thing is the backrest. Now, personally, I believe the lower the backrest, the better. So, but that's going to, again, depend on your injury. Um, obviously, you know, I'm going to be able to go a lot lower than someone without core muscles and things like that. But I think, you know, as low as you can go for you is the best because it just gives you more ability to move and to rotate and things like that. And it just doesn't get in the way as much, I find. Um, but I also find that if I personally have a super high backrest, so my old wheelchair had like a really high backrest, came to pretty much my shoulders, I slumped a lot more in the chair because I could. And it, it wasn't good for my posture. So now that I've got a lower backrest that just goes around the bottom of my spine, um, I feel like I'm encouraged to sit up more. And again, this is going to depend on the type of your disability. But I also have a little bit of dump in my chair. So the seat goes into the backrest kind of like this which means that my pelvis is nice and secure and I'm able to sit up straight. So, you know, you don't always have to go for a super high backrest to get stability. You can change things like the dump and the camber of the wheels to get more stability and to be able to sit up straighter. Because if you're going to be sat in the chair for a long time, you want to make sure you have good posture. Um, so in considering that, you're also going to have to consider what kind of supports you need. If you have scoliosis and things like that, you're going to want lateral supports to kind of prop you up a little bit straighter. But again, that's very much something to discuss with your OT and your physio, depending on your disability. But as a general rule, I think go as low as you can. Now, if you do need assistance pushing, 
Um, there's, you know, power assist wheels and all of these other kind of things, but I would seriously recommend the Smart Drive. I tried one of these out when I was in Sydney for a competition not long ago, and they're amazing. You basically start off pushing, you know, um, and then it just takes you at that speed, and you can push a little bit more if you want to increase the speed, or you just brake normally. And the great thing about the Smart Drive is it's so much lighter than the power assist wheels that go on the chair. Um, which again, you know, I've just talked about the importance of weight, you want to keep it as minimal as possible. So I would definitely recommend the Smart Drive. Uh, then there's things like caster size to consider. I personally, like, aesthetically prefer a smaller caster. And I find that you can turn and things a lot easier with a smaller caster. But if you're going on uneven ground, a smaller caster means that little bumps make it really easy for you to just go flying out of your chair. So again, it's going to depend on your balance, if you haven't got the best balance, um, or if you're thinking about doing more, um, you know, I guess off-road kind of wheeling, like not just on a normal pavement or in a shopping centre, definitely consider going a larger caster, because it just means you're going to be able to roll a lot smoother and you're not going to have to worry about face planting, like I have done a couple of times. <laughs> There's the debate between folding and solid chairs as well. Um, if you're only going to be getting minimal use out of your chair, a folding chair is fine. You know, it's going to get you from A to B. And as long as it's well measured again and taking into consider consideration the other things, you should be fine. But if you're like me and you use your chair a little bit more, or if you use it every day, I would highly recommend going a solid chair. They are so much more compact, they're usually lighter, um, and they just roll so much better for me, and especially with me travelling, it's so much easier for me to put it together. Um, I just think overall, they provide a lot better support and rollability. Um, and I just, after being in a folding chair and now being in a solid chair, I would never go back to a folding chair. And people say, you know, oh, I need a folding chair to fit it in my car and stuff like that. My solid chair is actually way smaller than my folding chair. Um, and it's way more compact. The backrest falls down, the wheels pop off, and I can put it in nearly every boot, you know, that I've, I've witnessed. Or I can just chuck it on the back seat, and it will fit. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend going a made-to-measure, lightweight, manual chair, if you can. It's gonna make a big difference to your body. I am so much less sore pushing my chair now, and I have so much more energy, and I'm able to get places much more efficiently. If you are like me and you do like to do the odd little um, adventure, walk, hike type thing where the ground isn't going to be as even as you know a pavement or a shopping centre, I would recommend a freewheel as well. I haven't tried these myself but I've seen a lot about them and I'm waiting to sort of get one. Um, and these basically list up your front casters and replace it with one big front wheel. Just a little attachment that clips on the front and it means that you can just roll so easily over dirt. Um, even, you know, sand and things like that. Uh, because, you know, just because you're in a wheelchair doesn't mean you should get out and adventure, so I would recommend that also, as well as the Smart Drive. My personal wheelchair that I have now is a Panthera U2, I do believe. It's from the Panthera range anyways. It's not the full carbon fibre, but it has the carbon fibre axle. It is the best chair that I've sat in, that I've rolled in, and I've trusted quite a few in purchasing this chair. Um, so I'd highly recommend that if you can. The price point is actually not too high, and especially within Australia, things like Cape Grants and stuff like that will cover it quite well. Um, I'm not sure how different systems work, so I can't really help you on that, I'm sorry. But anyway guys, I hope you've learnt something from this video. If you have any more questions uh, specifically about wheelchairs and how to pick them, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, but just remember, super lightweight if you can, um, compact and fitting you like, you know, a good pair of shoes. Because that's essentially what it is. Alright guys, um, remember to stay shiny because I love you.